from the outside, it looks like any of a thousand drab roadside stands, places peddling Cokes, candy, and plastic souvenirs. Inside, there's nothing plastic about it. It's all real, and yet it's all unreal. It's a place where time stands still, where Ed Haberlein is, all at once, mayor, master, and child in his turn-of-the-century village. The Tuttle and Spice General Store and Museum, he calls it. It's a collection of old-time shops filled with a lifetime collection of this and that, and all of it the way it used to be, precisely the way it used to be. You do a lot of research when you're a series collector. And you say, well, now, what did they actually have in an 1885 drugstore or pharmacy? And you go for every detail, and it drives you up the wall. If you can't find the, the very minute things, uh, this is our folding lunch box, and as it says, it's Moore's patented June 6th, 1871. And uh, you'd eat your lunch, and then, so you wouldn't have to fool with a pail, no place to put it. You just fold this thing up, and you can stick it in your back pocket. Uh, it's a real good piece, and we found it in a little town of Elizabeth, Iowa, still on the shelf for sale. If ever there were an incurable collector, Ed's the fella. A traveling salesman for most of his life, he likes to joke that he used to work a seven-day week, four days for his family, and three to buy all the old odds and ends he found while he was on the road, and that he found irresistible. We found this down in the mountain country of, of uh, North Carolina. We obtained that from the old drugstore, Moe's Drugstore in Galena, Illinois. We have a little train over here on the side that um, we found in the upstairs of a drugstore out in Wisconsin. My dad used to say if you'd work half as hard selling the stuff you're supposed to be selling as you do collecting junk, he said you'd be a millionaire. Well, I had no aspirations of being a millionaire. But Ed also credits his father with giving him the collecting bug when he was a kid growing up in Wisconsin. I think I started because no one was saving the stuff from old stores. It happened to be depression times, and uh, stores were closing. My dad was an auctioneer as well as a jeweler and an optometrist and a farmer and everything else. Um, he was selling about three country stores or general stores a week. And um, I just envisioned a time not too far in the future that actually there wouldn't be any of this common stuff left. Uh, this is a real gem. These are 1877 and 1878. And they are full of slivers. A man would pick his teeth with those, he'd die of timberitis. Now that doesn't sound right. <laughs> it is the common things of another era that are uncommonly well preserved in Ed's village where nothing is for sale, not even an admission ticket. A visit will cost you only some time. Count on spending more than a little of that. For Ed Heberlein is part historian, part frustrated actor, part tour guide, and all storyteller. This is Dr. Foot's eye sharpener, and I'm gonna tell you how they use it. They moisten these cups, put one on either eye, put the stem in your mouth and suck on it and it sharpens your eyeballs. Now, if you believe that one, you can send Dr. Foot a dollar and you can probably get one too. <laughs> For the camera, we asked him simply to walk from one room to another. He couldn't resist putting on a performance. You ready? Well, my gosh, it's almost Christmas again. And, and you know, Maxine keeps hollering about me wearing this straw hat all winter. and. I reckon I could break down and switch hats and say, hey, that ain't no hat. That is a spittoon and that's cast iron. I'd have a heck of a headache if I wore that thing. She wants me to brush my teeth and get ready to go to town. Well, if I can find that toothpaste. Did we mention that Ed likes to tell stories? 
Oh, well, I didn't want to brush my teeth anyway. I I'm going to tell you about a store right now, and it still is in existence. There are at least two fascinating tales for every item here. One about the object itself. I referred to it as a gourd of snuff again, and oh, she really shook her head. I said, ma'am, did I say something wrong? She said, you sure did. That ain't no gourd of snuff. That there's a bladder of snuff. And one about how Ed acquired the item. Oh, I got to tell you this one. And so planned to arrive early and spend the winter. Uh, probably one of the most interesting and the oldest, one of the oldest toys in uh, wheel goods is that touring car, the blue touring car up there. That's a friction drive, as they call it. You push on it and then set it down and it'll run. We have bicycle lanterns. Here's a little bicycle lantern. We have the red on one side and the green on the other. A bullseye lens on the front. Ladies spittoons. This is a china spittoon. And uh, when she was working in the kitchen, she'd just open up the stove, spit in the stove. But when she had company and went into the parlor or the living room, she'd carry this hand spittoon. And then, of course, the eyes had to be emptied. They just poured out the spout here. Now, this is a tooth key, and it was used in 1885. Now, you know it's going to be painful. So, what we probably should do is give you a shot. <laughs> and this drugstore is just filled with things that cure just about anything. And in order to ward off the possibility of picking up the wrong bottle and giving the wrong medicine, they marked the poison bottles with many different ways. Now, this one had little dots, raised dots on the side. And you notice the shape of it's like a coffin. Okay. This is a fly fan, which was patented in 1859. People say, how do you know it was a fly fan? Well, it says so, right on the bottom with the patent date. And the object was to run the blades just over the top of your head and just set the fan in the middle of the table. It keeps the flies stirred up while you eat. Ed doesn't know what his collection is worth. And to hear him tell it, he doesn't really care. What matters is, he loves his treasures, and he loves sharing them with others. We've made a lot of friends with this, and uh, they don't have a bank to put friends in. But I, I hope we've got a lot of them. It'd take a big bank. <laughs>